Okay, I need to record. I need to record now. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. This is episode 24. Today is Saturday and it's October. It is October the 1st and thus begins my favorite month of the year. It is my birthday month. It is fall and I am super happy that it is October. I really do love October. That being said, today is incredibly dreary outside. Um, I don't know if you can tell by the really bad lighting, but it is incredibly overcast. And so I'm making do with a lamp that I have on in the corner of the room, but we will see how that pans out. It was the best that I can do. So, and I really wanted to get an episode out today. So we'll see how this goes. So how is everyone? How has everyone been doing? Since it is incredibly overcast and dreary, I am getting really cozy. It is sweater weather. No, I did not make the sweater. <laughs> I'm drinking some tea. This is Santa's secret. I have about this much left in my canister of Santa's secret, but I think that Santa's secret comes back to David's tea in, I want to say mid-November so I will definitely be stocking up on my Santa secret because it is, it is the tea that I drink all year round so yeah anyway so yes welcome to the podcast after I babbled on I don't even know about what now welcome to the podcast this is a nitty crafty and generally yarny goodness podcast um, if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for deciding to give my podcast a shot. And if you're returning, uh, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time uh, with me. I really appreciate each and every one of you. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast, which you can find on Ravelry just by searching for Pin Feathers and Pearls in the Groups tab, and it should bring you right to it. Uh, the Group is where I post show notes for every episode and where there will be threads for some upcoming knit-alongs, which I will be talking about in just one moment. Um, and if you wanted to find me on Instagram and Ravelry, you can find me as Transitory. So yes, I think I got all the intro stuff out of the way. So here we go. So as I've just mentioned, there are a couple of knit-alongs that are coming up that I am co-hosting. So it's been quite a few months since I have hosted or co-hosted a knit-along. I just needed a little bit of a break. And also because there are tons of knit-alongs going on right now. October is just chock full of knit-alongs. So that being said, the knit-alongs that I'm about to talk about are all starting... All. I say all like there's like a bunch of them. There's two. Um, the knit-alongs that I'm co-hosting will be starting in one in November and one in December. I'll talk a little bit about that just because I wanted to announce them. So the first knit-along that I will be co-hosting will start November the 1st. I will be co-hosting this knit-along with Robin and Mary. They are the hosts of the Cherry Pearls podcast and they are a mother-daughter duo. So this knit-along has a bit of a theme. Uh, to gear up for the release of Star Wars Rogue One, we have decided to host a Socks in Space knit-along. So, uh, it is pretty self-explanatory. Knit up a pair of socks with yarn that is based on a spacey theme. So, if it mentions galaxies, space, stars, moons, planets, or it can be a yarn that's based on a colorway that is based on a fandom that is set in space. So if you have any Star Wars inspired yarn or if you have any Star Trek inspired yarn, Doctor Who, Sailor Moon, Firefly, Battlestar Galactica, you name it. If it's a fandom set in space and you have a yarn that is, you know, a colorway that is based on that fandom, then you can go ahead as well. Just any space themed colorways or fandom -y colorways that have a space theme if I'm explaining that very well at all. But yes, Socks in Space. So it'll start November the 1st and it will be going until, I believe it'll be going until the end of December actually. So the movie actually comes out, I believe December 14th or 15th, but just to make it a two month and along, we've decided to extend it out to December the 30th. I think that's what we decided, right Robin? I'm pretty sure that's what we decided. <laughs> So yeah, November the 1st, um, and 
I believe the hashtag for that knit along will be socks in space cal so yeah get ready for november and knitting your spacey socks that should be a lot of fun uh and then so that was one of the knit alongs the second knit along is still kind of up in the air but we have talked about it a little bit so i'm pretty sure it's gonna happen we even came up with the hashtag for it um so i was talking to kemper who is the host of the junk yarn podcast um and she also has junk yarn hand dyed yards and we were thinking about doing a knit along based on animated cartoons so first we wanted to make kind of a sailor moon themed knit along but that just seemed, didn't seem very broad so we were like why don't we do an anime along so um it'll probably start december the first and like the socks and space cal it'll be yarn or projects based on animation so if you have any adventure time yarn if you have any disney inspired yarn you can go ahead and knit something for this knit along like i said it is still really really early days that we're planning out this knit along but um yes the anime make along um should be happening in december so yeah i probably should have ironed this all out with with kemper before i even talked about it but i'm very scatterbrained all right and then one last thing i wanted to mention quickly before i start talking about my fo's and whips and stuff is I got a message this morning on Ravelry from Caroline, who is Quilter Caroline on Ravelry and I believe Instagram as well. Caroline is going to be releasing a pattern on October the 7th called the Yellow Roses Shawl. It is a beautiful crescent shaped shawl with a little motif of yellow roses in the center. So she's releasing this pattern on October the 7th and she is donating 75% of the proceeds from this shawl pattern during the month of October to a charity called Mind and that is because she lost a friend of hers to mental health so she wanted to create this pattern and um, donate the the proceeds of that to charity just to create some awareness um, donate to a good cause um, so if that is something that you think that you're interest, interested in, please check it out. Like I said, it's going to be released on October the 7th. Alright, so let's start talking about some of my finished objects. Because I have two finished objects this, this episode. So my first finished object, I will preface this by saying that Carol, if you are watching this, which I really don't think you are, but Carol, please look away if you're watching this because this is your birthday gift yes so I was knitting up the lattice shawl for my friend Carol for her birthday which is coming up on Tuesday actually so I was knitting up the lattice shawl and I finished it so this is the lattice shawl it is a pattern by Maria Mosca who is the host of the stitched in Sweden podcast so the lattice shawl, um, I knit this out of the fawn and the fox in her wolf base, which is a single ply um, superwash merino base in the Echevarria colorway. So that's what the purple is. And then the white knitted on edging is all just a Malabrigo. I don't remember the name of the base, but it is a Malabrigo fingering weight single ply and it's just like an undyed color. So yeah, it is all finished. It is blocked. It is a really nice size. Um, I hope she likes it. I know I do. <laughs> um, it's beautiful and lightweight. I think that she'll really like the colors because the colorway is gorgeous. Um, not much else I can really say about this pattern. It's knit up quite quickly, especially, um, all of this knit up very fast. It was just the knitted on border that was a bit of a slog because if you've never knit a knitted on border before. So for a knitted on border, you start on one end here. So you cast on along the, you cast on about, I don't know, like. A few stitches here and then you start knitting up along the edge of the shawl and every second row 
you knit two together with one of your new yarn of like with one of your new yarn and then one of the edge stitches so basically you're you're eating up one stitch every two rows going all the way along the edge of it so as you can imagine it's pretty time consuming i did it on my even star shawl which was far more time consuming because that was on lace weight uh so i've had some experience with the knitted on edges that take forever but because I had a deadline in mind for this one it didn't take very long because I was very determined to finish it in time and I did um it blocked out beautifully I can't wait to give it to her and I really hope she likes it yeah I really hope she likes it so shawls are a funny thing because unless you're a knitter I don't quite think other people really understand or quite like shawls as much as knitters do because they think that they're like I don't know fuddy-duddy or old or I don't know but I love shawls personally but I get a lot of people when they see me knitting shawls they're like you're knitting a shawl what but shawls are amazing guys <laughs> so my second finished object is a hat and it's a hat that I talked about casting on in my last episode but you never actually saw me working on it so I finished my fleecency hat and I just realized that this is being so blown out is that better it's a bit better yeah so I finished my fleecency hat it's a hat that I was knitting as part of Jacqueline of the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast. She was, she's having a elemental long and this hat was, um, one of her pattern choices for the air signs, which I am. So yeah, I knit the fleece and sea hat. So I knit this hat out of some patents, uh, superwash DK in just a nice natural color. And the pom pom was some leftover. Man of Steel Uruguay, I think, I think the base is called Gloria, yes Gloria, I knit a quadri hat out of uh, this yarn and I just had some left over so I put the pom pom on and my pom pom making skills are sorely lacking, it is a bit lopsided, like you can tell it's kind of, <laughs> it's not very nice shape up there, but boy it's, it's fine. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just knit it in this nice white color with a pom-pom. This pattern was super well written. I will admit that this 2x2 two two twisted rib was, was a lot of twisted rib because you purl through the back loop as well as knit through the back loop, whereas usually when you do a twisted rib, you just purl as normal. But that's because um, you can wear this hat two ways. You can flip up the brim um, or you can just keep that down. So personally, I like a floppy hat, so I like to wear it with the brim like this. I guess I could put it on and show you. So yeah, I like to wear my hats floppy. So I like to wear it like this. It's pretty floppy. Um, I like that. I love that pom pom actually. And yeah, I blocked it out. At first, when I was knitting it, I was worried that the fabric was a little bit too dense and tight. But um, once I washed and blocked it, it became perfect. So <laughs> I really like how this hat knit up. I love the colors that I chose. Um, like I said, the pattern is incredibly well written. If I didn't mention, it's called the Fleecency Hat and it is by The Wool Club. And I can just show you the hat with the brim folded up too. Yeah, you can wear it this way as well. So, but like I said, well, actually, I wasn't sure if I would like it this way, but I actually kind of do too. So, yeah, you can... Two ways to wear this hat. So yeah, this is all done and I'm very happy with it. So yes, finished object number two. Lopsided pom-pom and all. I'm so fixated on this slanty pom-pom now. It's 
So I do have some whips to show you. First whip that I have been working on is something that I really should be... I should at least be done the first sock by now, but I'm not. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this, but it is my Hermione's Everyday Sock um, knit out of the Fawn and the Fox in the Fawn base in the Spumoni colorway. Last time I showed it to you, I was just on the heel and now I'm just on the foot. Uh, I was really hoping to at least have a hoe to show you this week, but um, it didn't happen. So yeah, this is still the first sock on the needles. I'm knitting this on my Knitter's Pride Carbons uh, US1. Not much else I could say about this guy, so... Yeah, that one, I should definitely at least have one sock done, but I don't, but that's okay. The second work in progress that I'm working on is one that has been hibernating for a little bit because I cast on for this project in June, guys. So I pulled this project out of hibernation also because Katrina of Cat's Kettle and the Yarn 30 podcast is hosting a graveyard knit along which is where you assess some of your long languishing works in progress and you decide if you're going to just put it to rest and frog the yarn to be reused in something else or you bring it back from the dead and you start working on it again. So I cast on for this project back in June on a whim, knit a few rows on it, put it away and never touched it again. <laughs> Um, until a week or so ago when I decided to pick up my boxy sweater again. And I am aware that it's really like, it's not like I've done a lot on it, but I picked it up again. So this is the boxy sweater. It is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. It is a really beautiful oversized sweater. I think it's actually one of her her most popular patterns and it's a pattern that I've loved ever since I saw ever since I saw it and I knew I wanted to knit it so I'm glad I cast on for it. it's so wonky on these needles there's so many stitches I'm glad I cast on for it but that being said this is probably a project that it it's more of a product knit than a process knit because I just want that finished sweater um, as you can see, it is just a lot, a lot, a lot of stockinette in the round right now. I have to do about 16 inches of, of this. Of this. And I'm actually probably going to knit it a little bit longer, so maybe 17 to 18 inches, I'm thinking. So, that's a lot of stockinette in the round. <laughs> but if I do manage to finish this... Which I probably won't finish it by the end of the cal, because I think the cal ends October 31st. Um, I mean, it would be a miracle upon miracles, but I probably won't. But I'm glad that I have the incentive to work on it again. It's a nice, easy project to just pull out and just knit plain stockinette on. I'm knitting this out of some yarn that I got at my local yarn shop. It is pear tree, four ply, 100% um, Australian wool. I think it's merino though. It's super soft. Uh, yeah, it is merino. It says so right here. <laughs> it's in the yoke colorway. I'm knitting these on my Haya Haya Sharp Interchangeables US 3. I did not do a gauge swatch. Um, the pattern says to use a US 4, but I don't know. Back in June, I decided to use a US 3. And like I said, I didn't do a gauge swatch because in my mind I was like, it's either going to be slightly more fitted or slightly more oversized depending. I'm knitting, yeah, it's an oversized sweater. It should be okay. That's what I'm telling myself. And then my last work in progress is something that I cast on for a couple days ago actually. So I cast on for another pair of socks. I cast on for a pair of No Pearl Monkey Socks. So last weekend, Erin and I went up to visit Laura and her husband Michael to dye some yarn, which I'll show you what we dyed up afterwards. <laughs> but while we were there, Laura dyed me up a skein of her Spooky Time colorway. Just getting blown out again. Of her Spooky Time colorway 
on her magpie base. I love this colorway. You know how I feel about those minty greens. <laughs> um, so she dyed me up a skein of this and I decided to cast on a pair of socks with it. Um, Lara is also hosting a Halloween knit along right now so I figured why not. So I cast on for a pair of no pearl monkey socks. And I knit the majority of what I have here last night while watching something that I'll talk about in recommendations. So yeah, and can I just take a moment and point out this charm? It's a little Snorlax. I showed these on Instagram, so I got two of these charms. Where is the other one? So, I got two of these Pokemon charms from a Etsy seller who I follow on Instagram. Her name is Pink Sugar Cotton, and she makes these adorable polymer clay little chibi guys. But I got a Bulbasaur. Can you see him? He's so cute. I really can't get over how adorable these are. <laughs> um, and then I got this little Snorlax. So... Two of my favorite Pokemons, and I just think, I just, honestly, I can't get over how freaking cute these are. <laughs> yeah, they are adorable. So yeah, that is my last work in progress that I've been working on this week. I do have some planned works in progress coming up. Um, I actually caked up some yarn for these, so I guess I can show you that and talk about it a little bit. Oh, and look! I put my pins on my Fawn of the Fox uh, wool felt bag. Or at least some of my pins. I was really struggling to figure out where I wanted to put these pins and then I finally thought that the wool felt bag from Lara would be the best choice just because it's a sturdy fabric and then if I decide to take these out um, the wool felt won't show the holes as much. So. Yeah, just in case you needed to know my thought process on me struggling to figure out where to put all the pins that I've acquired. <laughs> so last time I showed you these two skeins of Tosh Merino Light that I wanted to use together in some sort of project, but I wasn't sure what. And then I got a package in the mail from a viewer named Amanda. Um, I showed the picture on Instagram, so I won't pull everything out that I received from her now. Uh, but in that package, which was such a sweet package, thank you so much, Amanda. She included a skein of a homespun house in the You Cook, I'll Sing. I think that's what the colorway name is. Um, I don't want to root around for the tag right now. But this colorway is called, is called You Cook, I'll Sing. And it is in a single ply, superwash merino base. I believe it's called the Jeunesse um, base. So I received this and then in my head I already kind of put it together with these two and I was like, that is my next shawl. So originally I was going to use these two in the All About That Brio shawl but then when I got this color I was like it has to be a three color shawl. And I think I decided that I'm going to be casting on for the Inky shawl which is a garter stitch slash brioche um, pattern. By, the name of the designer is escaping me right now, but I'll put it on the bottom. Um, so the inky shawl. So uh, that's what this is going to be. And I'm very excited about it, but I'm trying not to cast on for it just quite yet. I need to finish my Pure Joy, which I have not touched in a little bit. But I'm definitely excited by this. Just by this combination. I think it's really pretty. I also caked up yarn for another shawl. Um, so Katrina of Cat's Kettle and the Yarn 30 podcast is going to be hosting... I'm not sure if it started already. I think it did start already. I think it started at the end of September. But it's going until December, like mid-December. But she is hosting a po uh, She's hosting a podcast. Yeah, she does host a podcast. She's hosting a knit along um, for soft sweater knits. So the pattern designer soft sweater, 
whose actual name is totally escaping me right now, but she designed the Waiting for Rain shawl, which I'm sure you've all seen, as well as many other beautiful shawls like the Lonely Tree shawl, tons of beautiful shawls. She's a Canadian pattern designer actually. Uh, so Katrina is hosting a soft sweater cal and I've been wanting to knit the Authenticity shawl for a little bit. It's a pattern that was also included as part of Jacqueline's uh, of Brooklyn Knit Folk's Element Along, which is how I first saw the pattern and I knew I wanted to knit the shawl. It's called the Authenticity shawl. So I'm planning on casting on for that with... The pattern is written for worsted or Aran weight yarn, but I have this these skeins of DK. Madeline Tosh, uh, Tosh Merino DK, which is a single ply DK weight in the filtered light colorway. So I'm planning on knitting the Authenticity shawl out of these. Um, and I think it'll turn out quite beautiful. So, as with the inky shawl, I'm not sure when I'm going to cast that on, but I have the yarn caked up, so it's gonna happen. It will happen. I just gotta get my shit together first. Okay, so I've turned off the lamp to see if that improves the light situation, because there's a little bit more light now, not very much. I'm really sorry, you guys, about... I know that as I was showing everything that I've just showed that the light has been atrocious. So I'm really, I'm really sorry about that. Um, but yeah, let's just get on to what I want to show you next, which is, as I mentioned before, when I showed you my spooky time socks, Aaron and I went up to Laura Michael's place and we dyed up some yarn. So Aaron and I each dyed up a skein. Um, Laura and I also dyed up a skein a couple of skeins together but they did not turn out the way we hoped that they would so I don't have that but I do have the skein that Aaron died and I have the skein that I died so this is the one that Aaron died up it is beautiful shades of green with some subtle spots of brown in it and Aaron had a ton of fun doing this um, let's see if I can make this less blown out. Is that better? A little bit. So yeah, Aaron had a ton of fun doing this. Um, and I think his skein turned out super well. He has that ability to do subtle color shifts, which I don't think I quite have. So that was Aaron's skein. And then I dyed up a skein as well. I dyed up this guy. So as you can see, it's those shades of minty greens and sea foamy greens that I love so much. And some subtle speckles of a navy blue. And I really like how this turned out. I didn't have a plan for it, but what what came out was totally my jam. So I'll probably end up knitting like just vanilla socks. Um, a, this a pair for Aaron, of course, with his yarn, and then uh, a pair for me with my yarn. They're like crazy necklaces. Like, I don't even need a scarf. <laughs> Acquisitions, which I showed you the really super cute Pokemon charms, and so that was one of the acquisitions. Um, but I did get some yarny acquisitions as well. So a couple of weeks ago, I'm not sure exactly when. I know it was mid-September, I think. Um, I got tagged in an Instagram post by Jess, who owns Haven Fiber Arts. She just tagged me on this post um, about this yarn that was on sale, and she was like, she tagged me and a few other um, people who she knew knit socks a lot, and was like, you guys have to check out this yarn. It's on sale, and it's gorgeous. So thank you, Jess, for the enabling. Of course, I went over and I took a look, and I was like, oh my gosh, they are like on sale for $12 a skein. I'm I'm trying to be really good with buying 
you know, single skeins of sock yarn because I have a lot of it. Um, but I couldn't say no to, to the price. So I bought two skeins. So the yarn is Wound Up Fiber Arts. So the yarn is Wound Up Fiber Arts. Um, she has a big cartel uh, website and I will put that information in the show notes of course. So I bought two skeins. They are both two different bases. This is a two ply. I believe it's an 80-20. I mean go figure that I would pick the minty sort of colorway with the speckles. And then I also picked up this one which is like this beautiful peachy tones with these can't see it really but there's little speckles of uh, burgundy and just subtle speckles of yellow and just this one is really pretty and I believe this is a 7525 base yeah wound up fiber arts there was a ton of yarn um, it's not available anymore so I actually feel a little bad talking about it but it was an amazing chance to get some yarn for a good price and she's a really talented dyer I believe her name is Trish next time she has a shop update you should check it out not sure if there'll be $12 a skein because that was on sale but it was really I don't regret this purchase at all um, yeah so I also had a couple of questions in my ask me anything thread I am just pulling up the questions right now. I feel like it's been a while since I've answered anything from this thread. All right, so the first question is from Wonder Lake. She says, hey Candace, your nails always look pretty on fleek. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do you paint them especially for the podcast and what are your favorite brands or shades? So first of all, thank you very much for that compliment. Um, I honestly, I don't do anything particularly special um I just paint them but in answer to your question about if I paint them for the podcast it's kind of a yes and no I definitely painted my nails quite often before I started recording a podcast but I've I've definitely found that since I I've had a podcast I'm definitely more mindful of how my hands look and I find that when I paint my nails <laughs> They don't look quite as, like, it just doesn't look as bad as when I'm, you know, showing you things up close and stuff. So, it's just a personal preference. I mean, there have been episodes where they're not painted either, but I don't know. And I also think that it just, it stops me from biting. This, maybe this is kind of gross, but I don't bite my nails per se, but I'll always find, like, myself... I used to bite my nails, but I'll always find myself kind of chewing on the skin around them. That's probably really disgusting. But when I paint my nails, I don't do that as much. So yeah, there's that. And as for what brands or colors, most of my nail polish that I own is actually um, Essie brand. And I find that I really like Essie. Um, I find that the, the brush is nice and it always has a really smooth application so I really do like SE so the colors that I'm wearing right now I don't know what the color names are but I know that the dark one is SE and the my ring finger that's actually julep um, and julep is another brand that I really like but I only have two bottles of it which is what I got from from uh, one of their free boxes that I got when I tr just did the trial just to get the one free box just to see what it was like and then I cancelled after a month um, but I actually really like um, the my Wii U just turned on anyway I actually really quite like the way Julep goes on as well so I think at some point in in the future um, I'll have to make a Julep order or I'll sign up for the Julep box and get some more of their nail colors um, as far as favorite colors go I find that more and more I find myself drawn to well, these are pretty dark because it's fall <laughs> and I want it to look a little witchy, but I find myself generally drawn to more neutral colors than anything else. Um, more subtle colors on my nails are more my jam these days, but I mean, it changes with the seasons and my mood. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Next question is from Kiko Knit. 
She says, I am watching quite a few knitting podcasts and really enjoy having one on whilst knitting away. It really does create a feeling of knitting in company. I noticed that these podcasts get quite a few views. If you don't mind me asking, does this generate any income for you? Do you get any revenue from YouTube for attracting views? Um, no, it does not generate any income for me. This is this podcast is something that I started um, just to feel more involved in the knitting community. I I know it sounds really weird, but it's a lot easier for me to talk to a camera at home by myself than to actually this makes me sound like such a loser but then to actually force myself to um go to a knitting group where i feel quite awkward most of the time that's not to say that i would never go to another like to a knitting group or anything like that it's just something that i i do for myself to make me feel more active in the knitting community and i have talked to a lot of amazing viewers and fellow podcasters and knitters and everything thanks to this podcast so that is my main reason for doing this podcast it is not to generate any sort of income for it because i i don't make anything for this this is all something that i do on my own time and oh, what was the second part of your question do you get any re do you get any revenue from youtube for attracting views uh no i i don't get anything from youtube i know that i could turn on monetization on my youtube channel and then i think ads would play before my videos but it's not something that i've actually really looked into doing i just kind of if that's a whole side of youtube and podcasting that i really just have not looked into but yeah i hope that answers your question as well yeah so that brings me to the end of the episode uh so as i i briefly mentioned when i was talking about my spooky time sock I do have a recommendation, and that is what I, what Aaron and I were watching last night. We actually stayed up far too late watching this show, um, and I worked on my spooky time sock for the majority of it, although it got so good at some points where I just didn't knit at all, so. Anyway, that is Luke Cage. That is my recommendation this week because it started streaming yesterday on Netflix. Um, Aaron and I watched five episodes last night. Like we started and we just could not stop. It is so good, guys. You need to watch Luke Cage. If you've watched the other Netflix Marvel series like Daredevil and Jessica Jones, you'll kind of know what to expect. It is very much in the same vein because, of course, it's all leading up to um, like a joint series called The Defenders, which will come out after Iron Fist comes out, which is the next character that they're introducing in his own show. But yeah, Luke Cage is... I don't want to spoil too much. I don't want to talk about it too much because we, we like I said, we're only five episodes in. But if you're into Marvel, uh, if you're into superheroes, it's definitely for a more mature audience because there is, it is a very, not a very violent show, but it is a violent show. <laughs> if you've watched Daredevil and Jessica Jones, you kind of know what to expect. It's, it's like those. And he is very easy on the eyes as well. He is... A beautiful man <laughs> is all I can say so yeah definitely watch Luke Cage that is my recommendation I have a feeling that Aaron and I are going to be completely done with the series by Sunday night because we're just racing through it and we just want to see what happens and it's so good watch it that brings me to the end of the episode guys thank you so much for joining me for another week I almost feel like this episode could have been better. I don't know what it was, if it was the light, if it was just my general mood, the fact that I'm wearing lipstick and I never do that. Um, I don't know what it is, but I feel like this episode was kind of all over the place and not very good, but um, it's, yes. Yes, I'm not sure. Part of the reason why I rushed to get this episode done is because I'm not sure if I will be recording next week because next weekend is for Canada. It is um, Thanksgiving long weekend, so I'm probably not going to be recording that weekend. And then the weekend after that 
I probably won't be recording because October the 15th is the Fiber Shindig, which I will be at. And that weekend is just jam-packed because it is also the Calgary Tattoo Convention. And I will be going to that and I will be getting a tattoo. <laughs> it could be two to three weeks until another episode for me. So that's why I rushed to record this one. Speaking of tattoos, I did get another tattoo. Um show it to you quickly so I got a tattoo on my shoulder and it's pretty much healed now it's not even flaking anymore but yeah I got a new tattoo and I am super happy with it I actually had a birthmark it was right here it I mean it's still there you just can't see it anymore but it was a birthmark that looked like a bruise and um, I've always wanted to get it covered up with something and now it's covered up. So I'm really happy about this tattoo. But yeah, as I mentioned on the weekend of the 15th and 16th, I will be getting another tattoo. Uh, and then my birthday is on the 19th and I'm really happy about that. I don't really have anything planned. It's a Wednesday. I work. So yeah, you will see me in two to three weeks. I hope you all have a lovely few weeks full of knitting, enjoying October because October is the best month and I will talk to you soon. Happy knitting and yeah, that's all I got. Bye guys.